This is ACC Nation with Will Ogenen and Jim Quist, featuring ACC sports news and interviews. Available on streaming radio, podcast, and YouTube. Welcome to ACC Nation. That's Will Ogin and I'm Jim Quist. We're talking basketball, men's basketball across the spectrum. We're going to take a look at all of the conferences, what's going on nationwide, how it impacts the ACC. We're going to look at the AP Top 25 real quickly before we get started. Will's got a little breakdown of of almost every conference and how teams are doing. Um, The ACC not doing so well. Craziness. When it comes down to play, uh, number 11, Virginia, number 12, Miami, number 16, Duke. Don't see North Carolina in there anywhere. Don't see Pitt in in there anywhere. In the receiving votes, uh, we have number 34, Virginia Tech. And, of course, our surprise leader of the ACC, Clemson. Who would have thunk that? I mean, you know, Will, one of the things that that I find interesting about where we are right now the three top teams in the ACC, Clemson, Miami, Pitt. At the beginning of this season, and really not that long ago, you and I were talking about the fact that there are going to be some warm seats in in men's basketball in the ACC. One of them was certainly Clemson. The other one was Pitt. What's going on here, yeah. man? <laughs> well, I think the thing that's really carried uh, Clemson this year is they're shooting the ball really well. They're 39% from three, which is good enough for 14th in the country. Um, they re- really relied on the three. And you look at guys who shot the three really well, guys like Chase Hunter's at almost a 44%, PJ Hall's at 42%, Hunter Tyson's at 43%. They, you know, Those guys shoot really well from the three. And when you combine that with you know, they're a solid defensive team. They're, you know, they're definitely above average. It's really, it's really helped. But at the same time, you look at some of their losses on their resume. They lost at South Carolina, who was really bad this year, even with, you know, one of the top ranked players in Gigi Jackson, they lost, you know, on a neutral to Iowa. Okay. You get it. You know, Iowa's a good, uh, solid team, but then they lost on a neutral to Loyola Chicago. Um, yeah, Loyola is six and nine on the year. That's that one looks like a pretty bad loss. That's you know if if you know they end go on a end up going on a losing streak, a, a game like games like that, the especially the South Carolina and Loyola games, are going to factor in later down the road. Yeah, like you said, they're a five and zero. Oh. I think the most impressive part about Clemson's they're doing doing a lot of this on the road. Uh, they won at um, Georgia Tech, you know, to start the the meat of the conference schedule. Mm-hmm. They've won at Virginia Tech, which is hard to do. Uh, you know, although Virginia Tech's on a bit of, bit of a losing streak, but they're also about one of their key cogs in Hunter Couture, who's missed a few games. Uh, at Pitt, like you said, Pitt's been definitely overachieving to this point. Uh, a great game on Saturday ended up being a one point uh, win for the Tigers. The you know a little uh, good game there. You know, we mentioned Pitt, and yeah, I think that's probably one of the big stories. Too and you know they're a pretty good shooting team. Um, when you look at what they've been able to do, you know they're they don't they're solid and everything. They don't they're not like great at everything, but you know they they have some. You know they beat Virginia at home in a game where Virginia just they were up double digits and just I don't know what happened in that game. Obviously beat North Carolina at home, but North Carolina's been up and down all season. Don't really know what to think of them. Um, you have be they beat NC State uh, in Raleigh early in the season, uh, their first game uh, of conference play, which is funny because NC State's actually been pretty solid this year. Um, yeah. They're 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 a team that the the, the computer metrics like a lot. Um, they're sitting at three and three in the league, thirteen and four overall. Their losses are to Kansas, Pitt, Miami, and Clemson. Again, you know, three conference, pretty solid conference losses. Miami is probably the one team out of the three. They're up there that I definitely buy because of their guard play. Okay, you lose a close neutral core game to Kansas. Okay, Kansas might be a one seed in March, the way they're playing right now. Um, and on, on Miami, yeah, their their guard play is carrying them. They're 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 shooting, they shoot the ball pretty well on the inside. But the weird thing is, is even with the good guard play, they don't shoot the ball very well from three. They're shooting under 32% from three this season, 
which is 252nd in the country. And you can, you know, sometimes that can really, that can really hinder you. And we, we saw the, on their last game last Wednesday against Georgia tech had hurt them. They, they lost to Georgia tech uh, on the road, which is a uh, probably one of the more head scratching results we've seen uh, in ACC play this year. Um, ACC has been, uh, to me, yeah. it has been upside down again. Uh, mm-hmm. the last couple of years have been upside down and, and it's just almost every sport, at least major sport has been crazy. And this year is no different. Men's basketball has just been absolutely insane. Started out strong, mm-hmm. looking good preseason, number one favorite UNC pff, gone. Um, are, are we going to see an, another Hubert Davis uh, resurrection uh, come late January, February, and March, where the team just comes out of nowhere. Uh, mm-hmm. That's kind of the feeling I get with uh, Jeff Capel at, at, and Pitt, is that he's got them where Hubert had them, la- you know, North Carolina last mm-hmm. year. And But is it something that's going to continue? Yeah. I mean, the only thing that's been a constant in the ACC this year is Louisville's Louisville. I mean, we knew they were going to be bad coming into the season. They've, they've held up that end of the bargain, although they had a, a real good chance to beat Syracuse Tuesday night, except they bungled the last possession um, and, and, a, and a, in a spot where they had a shot, a real shot to win that game. Uh, pl- good comeback against Wake Forest. They lost by eight, but they were down well into the double digits before making a run in the latter part of the second half to making that, to make that competitive. Um, just looking at Ken Palm's projections for the rest of the season, their best chance to win the rest of the season is a home game against Florida state on February 4th, where there are 38% chance to win. But I just, I, I don't know, I still, still think Florida state's going to be good. And, you know, the Knowles have been underachieving some due to injury and, and, you know, suspension. They're actually going to get Baba Miller back. Who's been a highly touted kid who had to miss a good chunk of the first half of the season. Was 16 he had to be suspended for 16 games in the in the preseason for for some really stupid stuff but he's eligible to play when, when they uh play again wednesday night at, at wake forest that's a should be a good a good test for them and i i still think there's something there with the Knowles. i i mean i it, they're they're actually three and two in conference which isn't horrible they're considering where where the league is right now that's that's actually in a decent spot to be that after beating georgia tech i think Another thing, when you talk about the league being upside down, Jim, Notre Dame is 0-5 with a really experienced team. Like this is, you know, they've got tons of seniors. Um, you know, a lot of their like most, you know, prize players are seniors plus the the freshman JJ Starling, but they're just, they're not defending very well. They're one of the they're not a very good defensive team. I mean, they shoot the ball pretty well, but they don't force turnovers. They say they don't defend the, especially inside very well. Uh, that's, and it's really, really showing because they're, you got to get, you know, turnover turnovers in order to, to really win ball games. And they're just not turning anybody over. Only three teams have uh, a lower turnover percentage than them. And it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of head scratching. And you know, that, you know, after the end of the season, all these guys who took a COVID season, the COVID year to come back are going to be gone. And yeah, I'm wondering what the, the future of Notre Dame is going to be. Yeah. i tell you what's interesting, Will, is if we, if you go back as a listener, uh, either to the podcast or watch uh, our video on YouTube and you listen to our conversation with Jason Carmelo, who's, our, you know, who does bracketology and we talk about Notre Dame. And he made some points about Notre Dame that we kind of, you know, dissected a little bit there about, you know, what's going on, what direction are they going, what's happening with Mike Bray that he's he's had talent and, and whatnot. We can get in further to that here uh, as we get into it, you know, um, as you and I were talking before we get started, we want to get take a look at um, – other conferences, what's going on with men's college basketball across the board, not just the ACC immediately. I, I jumped feet first in and drowned in the ACC immediately. So let's, 
let's get out of the pool here for a second and talk about what's going on with men's basketball across the board, because there's an awful lot of, of interesting stories in other conferences right now. Yeah. And I think the best team in the country right now is Houston uh, currently sitting at 16 and one that one losses to Alabama a team. I'll get to uh, in a little bit, but this is a team that is still really good on defense. That's been a, a trademark of Kelvin Sampson ever since he's taken over the program or in especially over the last couple of years when they've really exploded as a program, it's a good shooting team too. They're they actually are a um, you know, decent shooting team. They, they get offensive rebounds at the third highest rate. They don't turn the ball over much. Um, uh, and obviously in the American, the American is down a little bit this year compared to, to recent years, there's maybe two teams that could s- jump up and get them potentially uh, in, in Memphis and UCF who are also really good. Uh, I don't know if they're, they, they have to really play uh, top notch basketball in order to get them. But as we've seen with Houston a couple of times this year, they have struggled with some teams. Uh, I looking at, you know, there's a Kent state who um, you know, they, they beat them 49, 44, uh, St. Mary's beat them 53 to 48 in a couple of games that were, you know, but those, those are potential NCAA tournament teams right there. So it's not like they're, uh, they're bad, but still you, you would figure they could, they should have, you know, won these, those games a little more handily. Obviously we saw them beat Virginia in Charlottesville just over, just a little under a month ago. Uh, but they're probably the best team in the country right now to me. Um, as, as far as, uh, you know, who, who I think the best team is why, um, I think the best conference overall right now is the big 12. Uh, that's, a there are a lot of storylines going on out of the big 12. Uh, obviously the, the situation down in Texas, Chris Beard was fired this week after the, uh, allegations that surfaced with him and his fiance. We, we don't need to get into it here. Um, yeah, let's let we'll we'll just we'll we won't approach it any further than that. And obviously, they responded by uh, this week by giving up 116 points to Kansas State, who is probably the probably the surprise of the season. Uh, uh, Kansas State, coached by Jerome Tang, longtime assistant under Scott Drew at Baylor. Uh, they've they won eight in a row. Their lone loss is to Butler on the road back at the end of November. Um, have beat, you know, beat, they don't have a huge win on their schedule outside of Texas. They, they beat Baylor in overtime on Saturday, uh, 97, 95 Baylor, Oh, and three in the conference, a team that's, that came into the week actually ranked, uh, in the 19th in the AP poll, but is, but are Oh, and three in the big, in the big 12, uh, probably going to fall out, fall out of the rankings this week. Um, one of the big stories out of Kansas state is Keontae Johnson. Uh, last we heard of him was, it, um, he was on the floor uh, uh, at Florida when he was playing for Florida and that game against Florida State a couple of years ago. He collapsed on the floor, and um, not, a lot of people didn't think he'd ever play basketball again. But he's back. He's playing for Kansas State and is just having a you know a spectacular season for the Wildcats. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, um, we talked about you know Kansas State, Kansas obviously is you know the team that beats still even with some of their um, you know losses from last season. They're still really like Jalen Wilson is one of the top players in the country. Grady Dick is somebody, a freshman who a lot of people feel like he looks like the type of player that should, uh, should be at uh, Duke right now, just because he looks like the the player the everyone's going to want to love to hate this year. Um, yeah. Iowa state under TJ Otzelberger. Remember he took him over, took over a team a couple of years ago that won two, just two ball games in 2020 uh, got him to the tournament last year. Looks like he might get do it again this year with another really solid roster. Um, I'm I'm very impressed with what he's been able to do in just a, in a short time there at Iowa State. TCU um, is really good too. Jamie Dixon's done a really good job there. Took a, a two point loss to Iowa State actually on Saturday. Uh, beat Baylor, Texas Tech, Utah, who's a really good team. Beat Providence and Iowa as well. Some really good wins, but their their one loss or their other loss before this was to Northwestern State at home, the third game of the season. One of those really head scratcher type games. Um, that's a, but yeah, the big. I think the if you look at the at Kim Palm, the entire Big Twelve is ranked in the top forty or forty five. Texas Tech is the lowest in at forty one, according to to Kempom, which tells you just how, how, uh, how 
highly he thinks of the Big 12 this year. Uh, over to the, the Big 10, I think this is a really interesting conference too. I think everyone except Minnesota is within two games of first place. Um, it just shows you just a lot of a lot of parity going on in the league. Um, I like I like a couple teams at the top. Purdue obviously has Zach Eady, who might be player of the year this year. Uh, just just tonight beat Penn State by 13. Have one of the top offenses in the country. Like I said, Zach Eady is really good. Fletcher Lawyer, a freshman who's having a uh, who's playing a big role along with Braden Fit Braden Smith another freshman who's you know again playing and these aren't these weren't exactly highly rated kids coming out either they just found a role for the boilermakers and are playing really really well and obviously like I said Zach Eady is just a, a beast uh, on on the inside and his, his game has really stepped up this year um obviously you've got guys teams like Maryland who who are are still really good uh Michigan has been down this year. Indiana is really good. Uh, Northwestern, I think, technically is in first place in the standings, uh, or yeah. uh, in, in, along with Purdue. Yeah. yeah, there. I think there's a there's a gaggle of teams that with one loss. So Purdue's technically four and one. They're in first place, but Northwestern, Michigan State, Wisconsin, and Michigan are all three and one. And Rutgers is three and two, and Ken Palm has them ranked in the top like twenty. Uh, that's a that's a pretty solid conference too. Um, elsewhere, we can move over to Big East real quick. Uh, you do that. Once again, I, just, I, I want to insert something here because you. Yeah, go ahead. Talk, I'm going to give you a, a break here just to catch your breath before we get into the Big East because that's a lot to talk about too. But you talk about players that you love to hate, and in referencing Duke, um, I don't know how anybody could get past Grayson Allen as the player that they love to hate. And it carried over into the NBA so much to the point that uh, an announcer on the opposing team was all in for basically clocking Allen for some of the crap that he does on the, on the floor. <laughs> it's like, I, when, when does he grow up? Or is that just, <laughs> just his anyway, let's get on to the big, he, he is who he is, who he is, even in the NBA now. Uh, He's, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm 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 waiting for the video. I'm 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 just waiting for the video where somebody clocks him, and mm -hmm. puts the rest of us out of our misery. So, anyway, mm -hmm. Big East time. Let's talk Big East. <laughs> yeah. So this is a interesting one. We've seen UConn be a top five team for a while now. Uh, they were number one at one point. Did lose this week to Providence, who is actually in first place in the Big East. Providence rolling it back again. Uh, um, led by Bryce Hopkins, former Kentucky player, uh, having a big season for the Friars. Uh, Ed Cooley doing another outstanding coaching job. Uh, blast from the past, Sean Miller. Remember, he got fired from Arizona a couple seasons ago after all the the scandal stuff that went went down. And now, and of course, with the the IAR, IARP is basically taking the boys will be boys uh, stance and just letting everybody go, but. Sean Miller's taken Xavier and has been a really strong team with them. Uh, he's he should take them back to the NCAA tournament. Shaka Smart, remember him, you know, leaving Texas to go to Marquette, a lot less pressure, and he's doing really, really well there. Um, he's got a real strong team again this year, and I think they'll be going dancing. I think Shaka uh, is, a, is a great coach. I watched him in VCU. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I just think that Texas is is just a bad platform for any coach on yep. really in any sport. Because there's just a mm -hmm. mindset going on there that I think will destroy your career. Everything's bigger in Texas, Jim, including the pressure. And even though he did really well there, it still didn't matter. He was, they just weren't happy enough of what he was, what he was putting out on the court. And I mean, the best thing bad that was that, yeah, it just was a bad marriage and and him leaving to go to a lot less pressure job at Marquette is Mark paying huge dividends for him and he's showing just how good of a coach he is and in yeah, it's for Marquette for sure. Yeah. Uh, the the most the biggest question uh that I haven't brought up is how long is uh Patrick Ewing going to last? I mean, <laughs> god. Uh, how they're, they're... How, has he, how has he lasted this long is is the question. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, 
Yeah, they they must uh yeah, you look at yeah, they just yeah, he he never showed anything Ooh. that that he could be uh, a good coach. And and you see this all the time. There are guys who are great some of the best players in the history of the game uh and some to an extent on the women's side too we've seen some this some coaches that have who have been you know elite players but it just doesn't translate um they're you know georgetown five and 12 overall oh and six in the in the big east have not won since december 7th um just yeah again like i said oh and six in league play not projected to win again uh, um, probably their best shot is DePaul, uh, and that's at January 24th, so a couple of weeks out. Yeah, I'd say he um, will by the end of this season, maybe before. Yeah, doubt it. George yeah, he will. Be. He shouldn't last. He yeah. shouldn't make the. He shouldn't be back for next season. Uh, over to the Pac-12, real quick. Um, one of the hottest teams in the country, UCLA. They've won an 11, 11 in a row. Their only two losses were in that. Uh, MTE in Vegas where Virginia looked like world beaters in that tournament. And they've kind of come back to the pack a little bit. Um, they UCLA 14 and two overall uh, again, five and zero in, in the, in the pack 12 you know, nice wins over. They beat Washington state, Washington, UNC, USC along with Stanford and Oregon or, you know, obviously Washington is, is not very good. Um, same with Stanford, Oregon's a bit down. Again, like I said, their their two losses were to Illinois and Baylor and Vegas. They beat Kentucky, which is um which is a nice one. Uh, the CBS Sports Classic uh, beat them by ten. Beat Maryland by twenty seven. Who I mentioned a little bit ago. They're ranked number four in Kim Palm right now. Uh, looking at you know what they're number eleven on offense, at number six on defense. That's a good mix. If you look at teams that you want to take in your bracket later in the season, uh, teams that you know, have a good offense, good defense, and don't turn the ball over. UCLA is one to look at. Jaime Jaquez is a really, you know, is a senior who's, you know, been a real, real experienced player for them. Uh, Tiger Campbell. They also have a freshman, Amari, Mari Bailey, who's, you know, contributing very well. They have a couple freshmen that have done, done some good things off the bench for them. Um, elsewhere, obviously Utah has, has been always flying under the radar. They're not as talented as, as uh, UCLA is, but you know, just took their first loss on Saturday to Oregon on at home. So they, but they're a really, but their calling cards been defense. They're one of the top defensive teams in the country. Uh, Arizona stayed four and one under Bobby F and Hurley, kind of to quote John Rothstein. Um, just beat Washington again, but they, I don't expect them to to stick around. I think they're gonna they're taking to take a step back at some point. They've lost to Texas Southern and San Francisco. You look at the Kim Palm rankings; they're outside. That those are two teams that are not in the top 100. Um, Arizona, a team that we talked about with Jay, with uh, with you know, a while back when we were talking about teams that might be, you know, little you know teams to watch. They're one of the top offensive teams in the country, but they don't. But their defense is, is not as good. They actually took a loss to Washington State on Saturday by 13, and. One of the, th- the things that came out of it is they play two bigs, and Umar Balo is a seven footer, and Azul Tubelis, who's six eleven. And some, if you got you know people who can spread the floor, and like Washington State does, they're they're a team that takes a lot of threes. You can really benefit from that. So that's an interesting interesting thing to fo- to follow as well. Over to the SEC, and I'm going to get to a team that I really really like, and that's Alabama. Uh, they're one of the few teams out there that can combine a, a fast tempo with good offense and good defense. They were they're the third fastest team in the country. They rank their top twenty in defense and or top twenty in offense, top twenty in defense. Uh, just fat. You know, I guess there aren't very many games they've played this year where they don't average a point per possession. Um, they have some pretty impressive shooting games out there. Just beat Kentucky by twenty six on Saturday. Uh, at home, the, their next game is, is against Arkansas. That should be a fun game to watch on Wednesday night. Um, you know, Arkansas is you know, a team that had it loaded up with a lot of freshmen, and but they've had some injury issues, so they've tailed off just a little bit. But they're a team. The team there, they should be a really good team too. Uh, Eric Musselman, their coach, he's somebody that is, uh, you know, obviously done a lot of uh, good things there in a short stint in Fayetteville. Um, 
I think the, you know, the story obviously is what is up with Kentucky, um, a team that is sitting at now 10 and five, one and two in the sec, uh, got blown out at Missouri by 14. And I mentioned the 26 point loss to LSU, um, struggle with Yale. Their best win probably is, uh, Michigan in when they played that game in England uh, back in the or back in early December. So they don't really have a great win on on American soil, um, probably LSU. And but they but they only won that game by three and they, they shoot the their calling cards. They shoot the three very well. But there are a lot of a lot of grumbling going on in Lexington because people are starting to call John Calipari's offense archaic, um, which is weird. But once again, they're he brings in probably one of his better recruiting classes he's he's had in his time there coming in next year um at least that's what the recruit mix are saying i mean it's going to be hard to top the one where he brought it when he won the national title loaded around the um the team that uh, i'm trying to think it was like 20 it was like 2012 maybe i'm thinking the one where he had like yeah the one in 2012 where he had Mark Stieg, Michael Kidd, Grillcrest, and Anthony Davis. You know that was just a really that was just a, a strong team because they had uh, a good a bunch of freshmen and some good good you know, veterans around them, and that was just a team that you know that just doesn't have that. And I I'm just kind of wondering if if Calipari has it anymore. Well, I I just don't think that that the stars aligning like that happen very often. I mean, there, there are a lot of people who will go back and go, well, you know, you look at the the UCLA days and and a lot of other schools that, well, sometimes stuff falls in place like that. <clears throat> but I just don't think you can compare what happened at like a UCLA to any of today's teams because things have changed so much. You know, there's there's so much that has changed in in how uh, players are looking at programs, how they can move around, you know, transferring, et cetera. Um, and how, you know, and I know we've, everybody in sports talks about NIL, uh, but it really, it really has made a huge difference in basketball. And somebody like uh, Cal is, is, I mean, still an awesome coach. He knows what he's doing. He does a great job. He's uh, got a, a, a good group of people recruiting there. And he's getting good players in, but the thing is, is the 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 um, I think the overall, you know, who's coming onto the court these days, will is evening out quite a bit. I mean, you're seeing more and more teams uh, bringing that sort of of loaded player roster to the game, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, teams that were like uh, Kentucky and or Duke the one and dones who were just absolutely loaded back in the day. Well, they can be loaded now, but everybody else is too. So I think that's a, I think it's a really good point, Jim. You look at the, especially with the, the admin and the transfer portal, you can, you can really rebuild your roster real quickly with the, with the portal. And, you know, you can plug, you can plug in a hole with a top, you know, mid major player and, that that guy can have a big role in the in the on your team and yeah i think that i think that's a really good point you look at that and you see you know eric musselman is one who's done you do who's been kind of the king of the transfer portal um you know tj i mentioned tj otzelberger a little bit ago at iowa state he's really built that program through the transfer portal you could do that a lot easier in basketball than you can football but it's 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 a tool you got to use, especially you know, with basketball. I mean, you see if you see a weakness on your team, you can easily go out and fix it. It it is basically like in a, in a way like free agency for college basketball. You know, one of the things you you talk about with John is that um, is is his is his way of doing things. Is his program is it antiquated? It has it been bypassed? I don't think it has. What I think has happened is what we're what we're talking about here. Again, you know, equalizing out the the playing field, so to speak, um, makes it a, a lot more uh, difficult for a successful program to stand out consistently. I think he's, you know, he's got everything you need right there. Right. The thing is, mm-hmm. he's like I said, he keeps going up against people who are, are doing the same thing. 
here's the difference is that, and I think you see this now with football too, is that some of these coaches who have been around for a long time and it's always been a certain way, they mm-hmm. have adjusted. And I'm not sure that they can. I don't know that that uh, Cal can do that at Kentucky. I don't, you know, maybe he is at a point where it's like he's got to step back and go, things have changed. And I don't know if, if I'm of the mindset to be competitive with with all that I need to be competitive, I don't know that I can do that any longer uh, because you, like you said, Musselman, you, you got other guys like that out there who know the system so well, they're gaming it so well and playing it so well that uh, those are the guys with advantages. And if you're young and you got a lot of energy, you're going to burn through some of these older coaches pretty quickly. I, I hate to say yeah. I mean, it, it's sort of disturbing to me, but I mean, it, but the reality is, is that everything changes. Everything changes. You look in the mirror every day, you've got more gray hair, you got more wrinkles, whatever. But the reality is nothing stays the same. So what used to be is not going to stay that way. So don't expect mm-hmm. it to. And that's why, you know, we've got the churn. It's, there's always a constant. Yep. Churn. John, yeah. Not- and I know people are trying to get him to the Texas job now, um, obviously with what happened there. And I'm just sitting here wondering what makes you think he's going to do any better there. If you think his, his offense is out of date, uh, what makes you think he's going to do any better there? Kentucky's a better job than Texas. Yeah. Texas might be pay more money, but I mean, either way you're going to a program where expectations are unrealistic. And I think, I think it's, I think it's kind of stupid personally. You know, if, I were, if, if I were at the end of my career, you know, and if I were, didn't really care, uh, I, I would say, well, you know, give me a five year, you know, huge contract, do a Jimbo Fisher on them and, uh, and, and go out with a bang. You don't have to deliver. I mean, I hate to say that, but I mean, if Texas is stupid enough to, to, fork out the money like they like apparently they are and yes you're stupid you're not going after quality you're going after something that doesn't exist and you're willing to pay this god-awful amount of money because you can doesn't mean you should so but you know if you were um, in that situation hey I mean, if they were to come to me and say, hey, you know, I'll give you a five-year contract and pay you $100 million. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'll come coach. Yeah. yeah no problem. Yeah, who's to say I'm no? i retire right? after that. And, and right. what I do between, in that five-year period, maybe I'll have a good team or two. And yeah. keep you guys happy and keep your and if, mouth shut for a while. Yeah, and if you do, and if I don't, hey, I'll take however much money you want to give me to go away. Sure. <laughs> I mean, seriously, that's right. what it comes down to. And and Texas is just the perfect example of that. It's just I don't I don't get those folks. I really don't. I mean, yeah. I, you know, for for people who who profess to be smart businessmen and women, they're some of the stupidest damn people I've ever seen in my life. They're they're trying to buy something that just is not gonna happen. So yeah, John. talking about their football program. Make that jump, <laughs> you know. Yeah, two hundred million. Yeah, five. Yeah, million. right. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, and let me just throw out, I'll throw out a couple of uh, other teams before we uh, call it a, call it a podcast. Uh, Gonzaga is a team that's been a little bit down this year, and a lot of that's due to the guard play that has you know it's just not what it's been the the last couple of years they don't have the Jalen Suggs and I gotta mention him because he's a he's a local kid to me got a couple of scares this week from San Francisco and Santa Clara ended up winning both of those games on the road but um they're they're not dominating the the WCC like they like they have been in the past St. Mary's is uh right on their tails they're actually so believe it or not St. Mary's is actually higher ranked on Ken Palm than Gonzaga is which is which is very rare but I think that just shows and, and they have four losses, but you look at them, okay, you lose to Houston, okay. Lose to New Mexico, who coming into this week was was uh, undefeated, okay. 
losing to Washington's weird. Losing the they lost to Colorado State at home, which is weird. But um, yeah, but that's just a, it's just a WCC at least out, out. You know, those two teams will be battling it out. A couple of uh, other teams to keep an eye on outside of the the power conferences. I want to give a shout out to Florida Atlantic, a team uh, currently ranked 38th in, on Ken Palm. They're at a conference U.S. play, conference USA. They beat Florida early in the season. Uh, only loss is to Ole Miss on the second game of the season. They have, they say, they haven't lost since November 11th. Uh, pretty solid offensive team um, running running through CUSA right now, sitting at 4-0. Um, might you know they could easily run the table. I, I would expect them to to take a loss or two uh, throughout the season. And being, we are, you know, local to a lot of the ACC, you know, to the ACC schools, got to give a shout out again to Longwood who in the big South is four and O, uh, and 12 and five overall, um, low be as someone who grew up in, you know, Farmville spent a lot of his teenage years there. Um, very happy to see the Lancers having another really good season again, running, you know, sitting at five and O in, and a big South play, very happy to see, you know, Farmville on the map again. Um, and last team I want to mention is College of Charleston, who is actually ranked this week for the first time in years in the AP poll, um, undefeated or not undefeated. They're 16 to one. They, their lone loss was to North Carolina. They actually did beat Virginia Tech uh, in on a, in a, it was a mid tournament. It was MTE, but it was actually on their home court. So they, and they beat the Hokies in that game. A uh, really strong team. I don't know if they necessarily, you know, deserve to be ranked, but they they are ranked, and it's a cool story. And they're going to stay ranked for a little bit. Another team, actually, right on their heels is uh, UNC Wilmington, who's won thirteen in a row. Um, those two teams both out of the Colonial. So yeah, a lot of good uh, basketball being played all over the place. So definitely something to keep an eye on as you know we as we get into these winter months. Superb talent uh, again this year. It's just phenomenal mm-hmm. watching some some basketball and some of the teams that you mentioned. Those are teams that, that you should be paying attention to uh, if you have an opportunity. You see a game that's being played by any of those, uh, you know, any of them. Just take a couple of minutes, watch, because you're going to see something that will will be a flash forward to um, March Madness. Um, <clears throat> ACC uh, final look here. Anybody that uh, uh, among the 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 entire list, the fifteen. You know, we talked about Notre Dame having some issues, and I I don't know what to say about that. I've been I've been thinking about that for the last thirty plus minutes that we've been talking, and just you know we, we talked about they've had experience. They've got a lot of older guys on there that should make some difference. But one of the things, and it seems to me like I, I said this in our conversation with Jason Carmelo that um, that I thought Mike Bray just didn't seem to have the same oomph that he's coaching that he that he's had in the past, and that's 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 very subjective. Obviously, that's just my feeling. I, I don't feel like his his passion is there. And maybe he's at a point where it's like, you know, because passion uh, rolls downhill from your head coach and, and fires up. I mean, uh, you know, we're talking about Jeff Capel. Um, that's something that I see with his players this year is that I haven't seen in the past. These kids are coming together. And that passion that he has, Jeff has, it's flowing downhill and it's it's caught fire among the players and probably quicker than one would have imagined i nobody would have seen pit where they are right now uh larinaga is doing a great job with miami brunell <laughs> i don't even know how he pulls off some of the stuff he does in clemson mm-hmm. to be honest with you i he's uh, an anomaly to me so yeah, it's yeah, and and when you try to get figure out who the best team in the ACC is this season, it's generally whoever's playing at home that night. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to look at it. And, oh, yeah. um, and congratulations to uh, Tony Bennett, who is yes. got a new standard, and that's um, that's. Yeah. Really- 
Um, Definitely so, uh, had a lot of flashbacks watching the, the, the end of that game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Shire, Almost blowing a 20 something point lead. Yeah. Shire's not doing too bad with Duke. Um, I, I don't think anybody should have expected like a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal season, but they're not doing bad. Duke is, is again, right there in the midst of things and we'll see how long it takes. Basically, I think this is more about Shire getting up to speed than it is his players, him becoming the coach, the coach. Um, we know he's the coach, but, you know, setting that standard and becoming comfortable and letting that flow into his players and, and knowing how to push and pull and all that. Uh, I think that's still coming. Um, and Virginia tech, I, I don't, I, you said that there's an injury there that may have affected them. So that's a thought. I mean, yeah, Couture has been hurt and he, like I said earlier, he's been kind of, he's kind of the, the glue to that team and he's, he's missed three, the last three games, all, all of them losses and he's supposedly going to be back real soon. So maybe he'll be back for Wednesday against Syracuse. That's a big glue because it, it doesn't, does not feel like they're playing together at all. So, um, I, you know, in, in Wake Forest is, is starting to see a little, spark a, a little yeah. they've won three of four that's it's yeah they're a, they that's a yeah team. beat duke pretty pretty handily um and they're and they're back right before christmas that was a pretty impressive win obviously be virginia tech lost to carolina again at at chapel hill on wednesday night you know, no no shame in that and obviously beat louisville next couple of games uh home for florida state and at bc um BC is a tough place to play. That that game could be a little tricky. Yeah, BC. Uh, I, I think we need to give them a little more time yet, um, for obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. Syracuse. I don't know. I don't know. Think. Yeah, three. Yeah, a ten and six overall. Three and two in the league. They they have some pretty questionable losses. Colgate Bryant. Um, among those, they obviously lost to Pitt in Virginia. Um, just they're just not they're not what they're supposed to, you know what they've been and say without that they've had the pit game they they lost by two but they were down quite a bit in that game same with virginia they were down 20 plus against virginia and that game got to be a lot closer than it than it should have been so yeah this is a team that's they just don't have the overall talent like they like they once did i i like judah mince is a fine player um Joe Girard's a sharpshooter, but you know he he struggled at times during that that Virginia game. Um, Mintz is a, like I said, a freshman who's playing pretty well, but after that, there's just not a whole lot there right now. Right. Um, Georgia Tech Passner is. Yeah that that Miami win is just kind of one of those, huh? That, wins. I mean, congratulations. That's that's a that's a nice win. And it'll look yeah. good at the end of the season if you do anything else. Um and then Florida State, of course, I, I keep waiting. I keep waiting for something to happen there. I don't know what it is. I thought I thought they were starting to figure it out. Um like when they started, you know, and they beat Louisville and beat uh, South Carolina Upstate, you know, coming out, you know, coming out of the final break and then, you know, lost to St. John's, which is understandable because they're actually a pretty solid team, beating Notre Dame, getting blown out they, by Duke was a little bit of a surprise. They obviously beat Georgia Tech by 11. Um, this is kind of a critical stretch right here. They get, they're at Wake Forest, have Virginia at home. Um, they, they actually gave Virginia a, 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 a game in Charlottesville a little over a month ago. So we'll see how that, how that goes. But then Notre Dame that they, sh- I think they can win that game. You know, Pitt, my Pitt and Miami, obviously two of the top teams in leagues. So it's, it's not going to get a whole lot easier for them. Not at all. Will Ogenen on college basketball. Hey, thank you, sir, for giving us a rundown on everything that's going on across the men's basketball landscape there it's a lot to talk about and very Mm -hmm. short period of time to talk about it hey listen if you're watching us on youtube we would appreciate you subscribing and following us giving us a like 
uh, share us with uh, other other people who uh, like ACC sports. Uh, we're on ACC Nation Radio. That's worldwide. You can listen to us 24-7. We're also available via podcast. Be sure that you subscribe and follow us on that as well. And visit our website, accnation.net. Until next time, cheers. Boy. Oh.